Hello again. Welcome to another random um, video tutorial. Today, I am going to have a little bit of a dive into um, an asset that I have been using um, on a few different kind of projects called procedural road and highway tool with simple vehicle traffic aka snappy roads by test pattern creations which is a blueprint system for kind of creating road networks and i'm sure if you're on this video you have likely come across it and you are kind of potentially unfamiliar with some things and maybe uh, the documentation isn't quite clear and you're looking for clarity on how to use it um, it is a very cool solution to road systems in unreal engine it's not quite um got everything but i'm pretty sure that you'd be able to adapt it to have anything you can imagine you know by customizing assets bringing in new static meshes etc but yeah, one thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to give a kind of video that has voice me going over everything that I've learned by using the system. And hopefully that will kind of make it easier for you to jump in and use it yourself. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. So I am using a demo scene from um, another pack, Brushify grassland pack purely because i'm being lazy um i just thought of the idea to do this video um a minute ago and i thought oh, it'd be nice to you know just have a bit of a better scene to do this on but can i be bothered to make my own no um i thought i'd just use this as a kind of you know example map um so yeah I'm just using that Brushify Grasslands pack, um, which is available on the marketplace as well. But you know, that's nothing to do with the video really. This is just to kind of make it look a bit better. So once you've got your scene set up, and obviously you've added the road tool, Snappy Roads, to your project, which is simple. Obviously, you would just hit this add to project button once you've got that in your library and then you choose the project and it will be added to the content browser for your project which you can get out with control space um, and then you agree to with this panel and down here in your content folder you'll see that you have a new snappy roads folder inside that you're greeted with a few different folders that contain all of the content now you got your maps which are showcase maps um, the materials for the meshes themselves that make up the the roads the meshes themselves and then the textures which is all pretty standard stuff now the one that kind of matters to get you started is this blueprints folder now when you click on that you have a few different options um, I would say I can go into depth, more depth about various things, but I've not really used most of these myself, so I wouldn't want to jump into that in this video. I'd have to learn a bit more about them to be clear, otherwise I'm just, just making it up. So yeah, on this one, the two that I'm going to be covering is the intersection and the snappy road uh, blueprints. The one you'll use predominantly is going to be this BP Snappy Road Blueprint. So, first thing you would do to start your road system is to grab this one and drag it into your scene. And basically, you get this little, little thing in here. I have collapsed all of these previously so that we can kind of go through them. But these will likely be open for you. Uh, so don't worry about that hopefully the layout isn't too confusing um so yeah let's focus in on this with f and um i'm going to make this a little bit slower 
just so I can move around a bit clearer. Now, this is kind of what you get come, you know, out with at the start, and this is a single lane um, mesh. Firstly, before we dive into these um, tabs within the blueprint, kind of just going to go over this is essentially a spline um, that you can use to, you know, nearly draw with. It's not you can't really draw with it, but you, you'll see what I mean. Use it to lay out your your mesh in these segments. Um, but yeah, this is the entire thing selected, which allows you to manipulate the position. You know, if you were to cycle through your different tools with space bar, you'll be able to manipulate it um, in different ways, like standard transform stuff. You have these two uh, nodes, I guess you would call them, on either end, which are your kind of grapples for each end individually. So if I was to grab this one, it allows you then to start pulling out and manipulating the road via that node itself same as this one um yeah and that's kind of you know should be fairly obvious and as you can see the gizmo is kind of staying relative to the uh, uh zero the original position it's kind of staying straight from it so you might get some strange behaviors that you're not quite used to. So you have to kind of keep track of that. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go back needlessly to this position. Okay, so let's just say, um, you know, we've laid this down. You kind of got where you want it to go and you're thinking, oh, I kind of want to create a bend in it. Well, that is this purple line that you can see, which is um, a tangent, uh, the tangent points, if I'm correct in saying that, I believe I'm correct in saying that, these are the tangent points that are um, either side of this kind of standard, you know, control point, uh, ta uh, transform control point. If you were to grab this and bend it or move that, you would see you could start to create these curves in your road. Now the tangent uh, this point, this control point, uh, the length of it, sorry, so the length from that point to the main control kind of determines the bend of the road. So you can see here we've got quite a long one. And if I was to shorten the length of the tangent by dragging it closer, um, you start to get this, this type of bend in the road. Yeah, it's quite quite handy. And if we were to do it whilst it's, you know, in the bending stage, you know, you can start to get these kind of interesting curves out of your spline. And then you can, you know, see how, you know, if you can get these different shapes, which is pretty interesting. So... We now know that you can manipulate the position of each end, just like a standard object, basically. And then you have these, these points that you can adjust to create more interesting and complicated shapes. Uh, if you want then to move the entire piece, you would just select the asset separately to these points whoops sorry yeah so there you go that's basic manipulation of the spline so let's just say we're kind of happy with that i'm going to kind of get it roughly on the on the road uh, on the ground sorry on the terrain um another thing you can also do is play around with these tangents to kind of make it fit to the road slight uh to the terrain sorry slightly better and you're going to see it's quite difficult to actually get it to fit to the terrain uh perfectly but we'll cover that in a little moment uh first things first one thing to kind of work out is 
how do we actually get it to um, essentially how do you get another another chunk out of this um, you know that's going to be quite a big part of what you do adding new pieces to it and basically with any spline in Unreal the way to do that is to can hold a point that you want to kind of add to and you hold alt and you drag away from it this adds a new section to your spline which you can then treat almost identically I say almost identically you can treat identically to the other one and start to create these larger networks now you can see that I've kind of got myself into this position where you know the XYZ is doing you know it's not really working kind of how I want it to this is where we start to have a look at these different tabs now forgetting about most of them if we go down to this utilities one I figured out eventually that you have these buttons that kind of reset everything if you get it to a point where it's not behaving quite how you'd like it to so you have this reset tangent button reset spline reset offset reset roll reverse spline etc now this tends to fix up a lot of issues it might then not look exactly how you know you wanted it to but it does start to uh, clean up a lot of stuff uh, from manual manipulation um, and, it, and it kind of makes it look a bit cleaner and I would recommend you know if you get some behaviors that you think oh it's just not really doing what I wanted to uh, this utilities, utilities tab really does help a lot with that so you've kind of got that done and dusted and then you're looking at this and you're thinking okay like I mentioned before the the gizmo for the transforms is you know you want to move it directly this way but the actual gizmo is kind of like you got to go here you know and then there on the y and the x and you're thinking okay that's a bit annoying just got to make sure you've got this little this little gizmo button up here this little thing this little sphere like a globe symbol uh, this changes the gizmo from what they would call global transform to local transform so currently we're in a essentially like a global fixed position so you know the entire uh, 3d space has a grid um, and that grid doesn't change relative to everything in the scene and essentially this um, gizmo is fixed to that grid so but if we change this to local you'll see that it basically ignore well, it doesn't ignore the grid this, you know in a sense but it stays uh, fixed to the position of the selected item so you can see the axis kind of fix uh, re uh, adjusts itself to what is selected now this will allow for a much um, more natural control I would suppose I suppose you would say of the uh, asset and that works you know that's not a snappy roads thing that's just a that's just a general unreal engine thing but that's you know going to help a lot just having that kind of understanding if you don't already especially with rotating things um and kind of having control of a spline based system um so yeah that's kind of basic basic control of of, of the spline and then you would obviously you know just keep extending this thing and drawing it out how you want it you know pretty simple stuff 